Bridget's pregnant. My ex-husband's third wife is pregnant. How did you find out? My ex-stepdaughter told me. My ex-husband is thrilled. How do you feel about it? Well, I'm not thrilled, if that's what you mean. A few months ago, I would have been devastated. But now, I really don't feel anything about it. Really? Really. But it ticks me off. You know, he never wanted to have children with me. I thought that was a mutual decision. Well, it was. Do you want to have a baby now? No, not really. Besides, what choice do I have? The sperm bank? Well, it has its advantages. You don't need a man in your life. Boy, I could just see my mother now. Fiona, how do you know what you'd get? Well, how do you know? Some guy comes in off the street, claims he's got the IQ of Einstein, he dumps his sperm in a jar, and for that they give him 10 bucks. It's a little scary. It's not fair. You know, a 60 or 70 year old man could have a baby. Most men are fertile till the day they die, but a woman? At 35, the doctors are talking to her about amniocentesis. At 40, it's the Down's syndrome warning. And at 45, they're telling her she might as well forget it. Well, what kind of choice is that? That's no choice. I'm not sure I'm very maternal anyway. Otherwise, I'd fuss over Doreen's kids or at least get a dog. I feel okay about not being a mother this week. Every parent's worst nightmare, Rosie. You worry when your kid learns to drive, when he goes off to college, when he doesn't call more than once a month. You imagine the worst, and then it happens. Keith Ellis? Right. He and another kid, Taylor Lloyd, are being charged with manslaughter in connection with the death of a pledge at their fraternity. His family has not stopped calling. They want to know why the other kid is out on bail and their son is locked up at county with a bunch of perverts. Why is the other kid out? Because he comes from money, and your client doesn't. They've hired Angela Gianelli to represent him. Angela Gianelli? Right. Co-counsel to L.A.'s own Annie Oakley. Not so bad, Rosie, huh? Not so bad. <laughs> Come on, up against the wall. Give us some room here. I'm in through. Stand back now. He's around the corner here. Keith Ellis? <sighs> when was the last time you saw him alive? When we left him in the woods. But it's not like anything happened to him there. He made it back to the frat house okay. He was in his own bed in his own room in the morning. I... 
That's where they found him. Dead. What was the initiation ritual? Taylor and I took him up to the woods, made him strip and howl at the moon. And then we hid his clothes. And then you and Taylor left? Now, all Bradley had to do was find his clothes and get himself back to campus. It's not far. It's not hard. I know you probably think it's really stupid and childish and humiliating. We all had to go through it. It's what you have to do to belong. I feel awful about Bradley, Miss O'Neill, but I don't know what happened to him. All right, Keith, let me explain to you what's happening. The arraignment is tomorrow morning. Now, the police have a witness who saw you and Taylor take Bradley into the woods, and there is evidence of foul play, so you will be charged with manslaughter. But you will plead not guilty, and then we'll fight with the prosecution about setting bail. Okay? Is your frat boy guilty, Rosie? Come on, Mahoney, you've been working this beat for 30 years. What kind of question is that? <laughs> it works sometimes. Are you going to deal this one out? Answer both your questions. I don't deal out innocent clients. You're Rosie O'Neill. Yes. Oh, you're Angela Gianelli. Nice job on People versus Bell. Well, thank you. I stole a page or two from your book. My book only has one line. You do what you gotta, and you did. You kept him off death row. Thank you. I've got the other kid, Taylor Lloyd. I know. Bit of a change for us, eh? Going to bat for innocent clients. <laughs> I think I probably have more innocent clients than you do. I wouldn't be surprised. Remember, we're in this together. Good morning. Tell me you didn't get my case. Sure, if it'll keep you from crushing my arm. You're going to be co-counsel with Angela Gianelli? That's right. I would give my fingernails to work with that woman. You look bad. You look sick. I think you need a vacation right now. I can take your cases. What do you think, Hank? Huh? She look a little pale to you? About the same as usual. <laughs> Congratulations, Rosie. Thanks. I'm in the pink of health, Valerie, and I don't get a vacation until March. You'll take an early vacation. I've done it. Hank's done it, right? They count me out of this, ladies. Besides, the truth is, Rosie, I am much better qualified to handle this case than you are. Excuse me? I mean, nothing personal. You're a great lawyer. But? But this Ellis case, it's about frat brothers. My personal campus experience is a lot more recent than yours. Oh, that's low, Valerie. Even for you. No matter how badly you want to get on the Gianelli gravy train, we're just not selling tickets. <laughs> Sorry. Kids today, I tell you. Yeah, yeah, she's young, all right. Oh, so, uh, so how do you feel about working with Angela Gianelli? Working with a legend? Come on, what do you think? Uh, I just watch your back. Why, do you know something I don't? No, 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 no. I'm just reminding you that Gianelli's a tiger and her clients are her cubs. You want to see me? Yeah, come on in. Have a seat. When I left the force, I promised myself I'd never sit in another city issue chair. I have a kid who's arrested on a manslaughter charge. You know the drill. Will he do it? Why do I bother to ask? Reorient yourself, Kovach. You've crossed the street. Doesn't mean I have to weep buckets for murderers. You should have knocked tears with the both of us, Mitchell. Uh, why don't we all keep an open mind? Well, if you can't manage that, why don't we play a little game? I'll say that he didn't do it, and you try and prove me wrong. How about if I just investigate? That should work. What can I get you? You any Hungarian brandy? <laughs> this is a university joint, pal. You ever known a college kid that drinks brandy? Now, uh, we got beers from around the world, if you're interested. You don't check ID. You're a cop. 
I'm not necessarily interested in ID violations. We got a lot of fraternity boys in here. You hear about that kid that died, aren't you? You know him? No. What about those boys who've been arrested? You know them? I'd have to see a picture. I don't ask names. That girl, the one with the four beer bottles sitting in front of her, I got a 10. I'd say she isn't a day over 17. If you have questions about that fraternity, that's that kid over there. You know who Sagas does he? He supplies his brothers with various substances they can't get at the drugstore. Pleasure doing business with you. Totaling your haul for the week? Who are you? I'm the man you gotta talk to if you wanna graduate with your class. So how am I doing? Good. Really good. Uh, you, you know, you might wanna go a little faster. I'm going 20. All right, 21. I don't wanna get a ticket. Kim, the speed limit is 45. I don't wanna take any chances. The cops give tickets for going too slow, you know. No way. Yes. Yeah, but can they give you a ticket even before you get your license? Yep. Uh, what is it exactly that we're, we're going to get at this mall? Something I can wear without having to listen to Bridget give me fashion lectures. Oh, well, maybe we should have invited Bridget along. Can we talk about something besides her? Okay, so how's your new school? Horrible. That's it? Horrible? Yeah. I miss my old friends. If you say I'll make new friends, I'll scream, Rosie. I swear I will. Do you know how hard it is to make friends at my age? At your age? Yeah, everybody's in their own little cliques. In surfers, skaters, socias. Oh, well. Only a year and a half till I graduate. It's 547 and a half days, if you're wondering. Oh, I know. Yeah. Club soda with lime, please. You may need something stronger. Give it to me. You sure you don't want to reconsider that drink? No. Okay. This fraternity that your client belongs to, they used to initiate people by having them dig a grave, crawl inside a makeshift coffin. Get buried and stay there for an hour. Without? No, no, no. They weren't that stupid. There was a pipe that led from inside the coffin to the surface, so whoever was dumb enough to go along with this stunt did have an air supply. The national chapter got wind of it about 12 years ago, told them to cut it out. And did they cut it out? Until recently. How many of the people know about this? Not many. Everybody who went through it was sworn to secrecy. Take it with you to the grave, so to speak. Your client lied to you, Counselor. Detective Kovach, still running rough shot over the Constitution? Ms. Janelli, still making the streets safe for vermin? <laughs> I'm <laughs> vermin. I'll get us a table. I'm on my way. Stay well, Walter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, strange taste in dinner companions. I mean, she's not your LAPD pinup girl? More like the dartboard queen. One more thing. The other defendant, Taylor Lloyd, his parents have enough money to balance the federal budget. What they do with it is buy the kid out of trouble over and over again. Be interesting to see how much they have to cough up for murder.
I miss this old place. You miss the PD's office? They pay me an obscene amount of money to do the same thing I did there. I have an office the size of an airplane hangar and 15 people running around doing my scut work for me. What do you think? <laughs> did Walter come up with anything? Would you like to see some menus? Heavens, no. I'd like ropa vieja with extra peppers and enough rice and beans to choke a rhino. <laughs> Uh, Eros con pollo, please, and another one of these. Thank you. Most of my business dinners nowadays, the best you can hope for is delicately sautéed flower petals, artfully arranged and arrogantly served. So if I'm going to embarrass you by shoveling this in like a stevedore, you just kick me under the table. You got it. Our clients look innocent to me. I haven't heard anything from mine that would lead me to believe otherwise. I like you. I'd like us to be friends. You wouldn't hold out on me, would you? Of course not. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Buried alive for an hour. Hmm. I wonder what goes through your mind. Isn't it fascinating what people put themselves through in order to feel like they belong somewhere? True, but not helpful. Ben, I don't know what to do. If I go to the DA and try and cut a deal, he's going to know there's more to this than what the boys are telling. And if I don't, I'm going to be up the creek if he figures it out on his own, which he may. Or he may not. There's no telling what stunts Kovach pulled in order to find this information. But he found it fast. Someone is out there with a big mouth. Not necessarily. Maybe Kovach used a crowbar. I believed him. <laughs> An innocent kid being ground up by mistake. Come on, Rosie. This doesn't reflect badly on you. It makes me feel stupid. I wish you'd given the damn case to Valerie. Oh, yeah? Well, so does she. So, do I gamble or do I deal? You do what's best for your client. Right. What's that? Your case, your decision. You're a big help. That's what they underpay me for. I want you to tell me what happened. I already did. You lied. One of you, either you or Taylor, decided to resurrect the old coffin trick and something went wrong and an 18-year-old boy died. Now, Keith, tell me the truth. There was discoloration on the top of Bradley's body, not on the bottom. It's called post-mortem lividity. It means that Bradley's body was moved. Now, he didn't die in this dorm room here. He died in the woods. Please talk to me, Keith. It might help. It certainly can't hurt. When we went back to dig Bradley up, he was dead. A plastic garbage bag had blown over the mouth of the pipe. And Bradley died because of a damn garbage bag. What are the odds of that? Bradley died because you and Taylor did something stupid and dangerous. Whose idea was it? Yours? We have a motto, Miss O'Neill. The strength of the pack is in the wolf, and the strength of the wolf is in the pack. Yeah, I think the Nazis had that same motto. You don't get it. Taylor says women don't understand. You're on a full scholarship, aren't you, Keith? The pride of the family, the first one to go to college, whole nine yards. Yeah. What's your major? Business. Then let me lay it out for you. My guy found out what really happened. Now, if the DA's guy finds out, and there's every chance that he will, you're going to be stamping out license plates instead of mergers and acquisitions. And you'll find out how the strength of the wolf is in the pack goes over at Chino. I can go to the DA and try and make you a deal. Well, what would that mean exactly? means that you testify against Taylor in exchange for a reduced sentence. 
Taylor and I are brothers. We'll stand together. Or fall together? If we have to. There, she'll be in Judge Milner's court, Division 47. Whoa. Miss Gianelli, I've been reading People versus Calvert. You were brilliant, brilliant. O'Neill! Did I or did I not tell you we were in this together? Those boys have more sense than you do. Nice to see you too, Angela. How dare you talk to your client about a deal? Our clients do not have one brain between them, or they wouldn't be in this mess. I know it's aware that you have to tell me how to run my case. Everything the DA has is completely circumstantial, and he's unlikely to get anything else. If the four of us just stick together, we can grind this case into fairy dust. What, the strength of the pack is in the wolf? A juvenile concept, but not without its merits. Do not ever pull something like this on me again. God, I admire that woman. wanted for the baby's nursery. I mean, I've got a room smaller than a kid who hasn't even been born yet, and no bathroom on my own. I mean, how can Dad do this to me? Well, is the baby's room closer to their room? Yeah. And there's your answer. Oh, not you too. Oh, Kim, listen. The most important thing for you to remember is your father loves you very much. I'm just in the way. I mean, like Mom was, like you were. He's shoving me aside just like he did you. No, it's not true. It's not true, and it's not the same thing. You can have two children. You can have ten. <clears throat> ten of them. And love them all the same. He said you're special. You're his firstborn. It's true. I hate her. No. I want her dead. Well, he wanted me dead at first, too, remember? <laughs> We worked it out okay, didn't we, kid? Yeah. Why don't you give her a chance? Hi, it's Rosie. Please leave a message at the beep. Rosie, it's Patrick. I'm out front in my car. Could you come outside? Please? Is it okay with you? I've got the lemonade in, in the kitchen. Give him hell. <laughs> you bet. Hi. Hi. So. So. You look good. Thanks. You too. Thank you. I guess it takes a crisis for us to see each other, huh? I guess that's what happens with divorce. 
Well, how is everything? Are you happy? Delirious. But enough about me. How's Kim? Upset. Let me tell you, I, I could strangle her mother. It's a good thing she's in Brazil, then. If she weren't in Brazil, I wouldn't want to strangle her. She God. probably figured it was your turn. I can't say she's wrong. Look, I don't know what to do. I, Kim is acting like a two-year-old. She won't even try. Of course, I suppose you think I deserve whatever I get. Under other circumstances, maybe. Not when Kim is in such obvious pain. You can help with that. She wants to live with you. She wants to live with me because she thinks you don't want her anymore. You are her father. Right. Now, if you don't get straight with her now, you may never. She won't let me. She is testing you. Try harder. I think she needs a breather, Rosie. I think she needs to be with you. Now, you can say no if you want to. I understand it's OK. But I have to ask you because I think it's what's best for Kim. Bridget and I will take her on the weekend. It's not permanent, Rosie. It's just till, just till Kim comes around. I'll think about it. Thank you. Show him up. It's time to go home, Kim. Hi, Kim. I hope you told him it's about time he acted like a grown-up. Took on some parental responsibility. He's just trying to help Kim, Mother. Oh, really? From where I sit, looks like he's trying to get her out of the way. So he can do what he wants, when he wants, with that person he's living with. They're married, they're allowed. I must say you're very calm, Fiona. I'm focusing, I've got a heavy day in court. Sweetheart, it can't be good for you, suppressing your anger like this. Last night, Mother, when Patrick and I were talking, he held my arm like this, and he leaned into me. And it was wonderful. Because I didn't feel a thing. It's over, Mother. It's done. It is finished. Kaput. I belong to myself now. Come on, Drake, up. I gotta go. Are you going to take Kim? I thought about it. But I don't think parking her here is the answer. So, no, I'm not. Come on, let's go. It's a shame that kid died. It's a tragedy. But it's also a tragedy to have my client tried in the press. What do you think your chances are? <sighs> Better than the DA's chances next election. So, what you're saying is that the Lloyd kid is innocent? What I'm saying is we live in a society where it's a crime to be young, rich, and privileged. The court now calls the case of People versus Lloyd and Ellis. Ms. Janelli, I understand that you have a motion to present? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Proceed. At this time, I request a continuance in this case to give me time to file a motion to sever the trials of defendants Lloyd and Ellis. May I assume that you have arranged a plea bargain for Mr. Lloyd with the DA's office? We're in the process of doing just that, Your Honor. Uh -huh. Mr. Watts? That's correct, Your Honor. 
What is the nature of the bargain? Reduce charges in exchange for sworn testimony against the other defendant. You bastard! We took an oath! What the hell kind of brother are you? It's all a lie! Take it easy. They don't have a deal. Miss O'Neill, I will not we tolerate this behavior. He's upset, Your Honor. Understandably. Not in my courtroom. Better remove him. I shall recall this matter when your client has gotten himself under control. Does this mean we can't be friends? I need to talk to you. What's it say? Don't talk to the chess players. Get yourself a cup of coffee. I'll be with you as soon as I finish this. Whose turn is it? Mine. Checkmate. Hey. Thanks. You're welcome. It's important. Rematch tomorrow? Sure, Mr. Kovach. The sign says, we shall never rest until the communist brute is driven bleeding from the beloved homeland. I think they could take it down now. So? I need something I can use on Angela Gianelli. If you're trying to pry her off a spot she's already staked out, you'll need dynamite. Well, then find me some. I've got to be able to discredit her client. You said Taylor Lloyd had a long history of getting in trouble, so give me details. Find me an opening. My kid's going to take the rap all alone if I can't apply some pressure. Your kid killed somebody. Not by himself. <laughs> Lawyers. You've got to have something between arrest and punishment, Kovach. You have a better idea. In the old days, they toss a suspect in the lake. If he sank, he was innocent. If he floated, he was guilty. Worked about as well. It sure was a hell of a lot simpler. I'll see what I can do. And just so you know, I think your client should fry. Hi. Ooh, you smell like a brewery. Oh, that's because I've been up. <laughs> I've been drinking. <laughs> With whom? I'm not telling. Where did you get the booze? I don't betray my friends. Well, friends wouldn't leave you alone drunk in a stadium at 11 p.m. Oh, well, I stand corrected. After all, you are the expert on betrayal. Look, Kim, you don't care. Nobody cares. I'm here. <laughs> oh, well, whoop de do. <laughs> Where's your father? He and his current wife went to the laundry. And they didn't invite you? <laughs> it was a romantic occasion. The first time the two of them met or did it. <laughs> Maybe both, I don't remember. <laughs> be your home, see, because I, I don't have a home home, you know. Can you stand up? <laughs> of course I can stand. I have been standing for years. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> Kim, stand up. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> 
I can't do it myself. Woo! <laughs> I love you, Rosie. I really do. <coughs> oh. Feel any better? How can I feel any better? Nobody wants me. I guess I don't have to ask you how you feel. Oh, God, why do people do this? You don't have to go to school today. I'll write you a note. Oh, thanks. One to a customer. If you ever do this again, I will drag you to school personally. Do you understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kimmer, I, I called your father. Please, Rosie. Don't make me go back. Exactly what to bring. That's right, we'll figure it out. How is she? Not in shape for a lecture. Then I won't give her one. Yet. Kim? I don't want to go back to Encino. I haven't told her yet. I brought you some clothes and things, and if you need anything else, well, you just let me know, and I'll, I'll bring it later. You staying here? For a while. Thanks, Dad. Don't thank me. Thanks, Rosie. You're welcome. I'm sorry we got so far off track, Kim. And I'm sorry that life is so messy. And I'm sorry nobody knows how to do it right. I certainly don't. But I love you, Kim. And I want what's best for you. And I know that we're going to be able to work this stuff between us, right? Aren't we? Kiddo? Sure. You need money. Oh, Can no, I... not with any great urgency. I mean, I really don't think I'm going anywhere today. Okay, right. Well, you call me if you need anything, okay? Okay, Dad. Really, call. Uh -huh. Thank you. Well, I'll just let myself out. So you want the ground rules now or later? Later, please. Fine. Then I'll just give you the short version. I'm the grown-up. How did you find her? You had a bigger car, I'd show you the soles of my shoes. Three new holes since the last time I saw you. Because if this works out, I'll buy you new shoes. I don't like new shoes. Of course you don't. 
Next time we take my car. What, you don't like my driving either? You're like every other broad. The more you talk, the slower you drive. Kovacs, do you have any friends? No. I don't push it. So this Janet Franey, is she going to be a good witness if I use her? Judge for yourself. I was an idiot. I, I should have known you wasn't interested in me. Why not? You're an attractive, intelligent woman. I'm talking about him. He's, he's one of these kind of guys who's only interested in women as body parts. I'm sure you know the type. Can you tell me what happened? Did Mr. Kovach tell you that uh, Taylor's parents have been paying me 200 bucks a week to keep it to myself? Yes. Just in case you're thinking I let him on, I didn't. I wasn't thinking that. Janet, tell me what happened. Taylor came in one day with some of his friends and uh, came on pretty strong to me and uh, he can be pretty charming when he wants to be. I was flattered. Uh, I mean, he was strictly uptown. Uh, I never went to college. He said we were going to go to the movies. But instead, uh, he drove me out into the woods somewhere. And uh, he pulled over and... Uh, he yanked me out of the car, and he... He raped me. And you never reported it? I have friends who reported it and been sorry. When I got home, I was... I was sort of in shock. I mean, I, I just sat there all night uh, trying to get off the couch to call the cops, and the sun came up. Six o'clock in the morning, there was a knock on the door, and... Uh, it was Taylor's father's lawyer with a checkbook. He said he knew there'd been a, a misunderstanding between me and Taylor. And that I get a check every Friday. So I keep it to myself. And he told you what he would do to you if he got you on the witness stand? Yeah. He made it real clear. I took the money. Look, if I can't pull off what it is I'm trying to do, I may need you to go public on this. Now, whatever the lawyer told you probably still holds true. It can get very ugly. Are you willing to risk it now? Mr. Kovach told me that Taylor killed somebody and that he's just going to get a slap on the wrist like he always does, uh, unless I go along with you. Sorry. I do okay here. I mean... Uh... I've saved every penny of the blood money. And I say to hell with him. Great. You'll never make it stick. Maybe, maybe not. Check with your client and his parents. They may not want any more mud slung in their direction right now. Her testimony is not admissible. Not in this case, maybe. There's always the fourth estate. And if I can pull Janet Franey out of my hat, then Taylor Lloyd will also be charged with rape. What do you want? A level playing field. You pull your client out of that deal with the DA so that my kid and your kid get an equal share in whatever's coming. If it's jail, it's jail. I hate working with co-counsel. Oh, I think you just hate working with anybody unless you're in charge. Give me Jock Lloyd. Jack, it's Angela. I'm coming over. I need 10 minutes. There's a problem. Does this mean we can't be friends?
the bathroom sink has a leak in it. Did you call a plumber? I don't know a plumber, so I just put some bubble gum on it. Thanks. Don't you talk? I'm sorry. I guess I'm kind of out of practice. And I had a crummy day. See, that's how this thing works, you know? I mean, you have a crummy day, you come home, you talk about it, and you feel better. Yeah. Now that you mention it, I seem to remember something like that. <laughs> so, talk. What made your day so crummy? I won. <laughs> 